Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be working on creating a image effect. Uh, so I've been searching around and I haven't been able to find a really good like tutorial on how to do this. Uh, so I, I normally try to avoid tutorials and this is going to be the same thing. We're going to try to avoid tutorials here. Uh, but I'm going to try to go a little bit more in depth into how this works just because there isn't there's, there's surprisingly little information for how much this stuff is used. Uh, so they're not that hard to make. Uh, they take about three components. Uh, you need a material, a shader, and a script. Uh, so we're going to make all three of those. The goal here is to do like a pixel effect. Uh, so we're actually going to simulate reducing the pixel count on this uh, image. Uh, we're not going to like limit the number of colors or anything like that. That's additional stuff. Uh, you guys can certainly do that on your own. So what we need is there's actually just a, an image effect shader. So I'm going to create that. We're just going to call pixelate image effect. Uh, this is a brand new project, so I'm just creating it all at the top level uh, because why not? <laughs> um, and we'll create a, I probably I'll just call it the same thing. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> All right, so we have those two. Uh, the other thing I'm going to create is a material. Uh, so this is just going to hold our shader. So you just click and drag, I think. Uh, it's a little bit harder than that. You can't drag it over there. You have to do that. And then reselect it. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe a bug? Probably a bug. Uh, so... We have a new pixelate image effect shader and a new pixelate image effect script. All we need to do is connect these two. So all we need it, it takes about three lines of code, I think, in your actual script. There's not much there. Uh, you just need to enable one function, which is on render image, uh, which is going to take in some sort of input and export some sort of output and that's that's it uh, so this is our script nothing crazy going on here i'm going to execute it in edit mode uh, so this is going to allow us to actually see the effect in our game when we're doing the game even without running uh, and that kind of makes it a little bit easier to debug it because uh, it's a shader so those can get Debugging those can be a little bit weird, so we don't need those. There we go. And like I said, there's an on render image. Uh, what does this take? I think it takes a render texture, which is going to be our source, and it outputs another render texture, which is going to be our destination. And so this is a built-in Unity script or Unity function. Uh, it's called just like update or start or anything like that. Uh, but this one gets called when you actually come in to execute your effect. So we're going to come into this, uh, run our results or whatever was rendered in our scene. That's going to all come in as the source. Then we're going to pass it into some sort of material and we're going to get some sort of destination. Uh, we're going to get some sort of result out of that, which we're going to save to our destination. Uh, so we need to accept in our material, which is just going to be our effect material. Uh, and also, nope, that's it. Sorry. <laughs> then all we need to do is there is a graphics.blit. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a source image, render it using some sort of shader, and save it to a destination, which is exactly what we need to do. Uh, so if you just blit the texture, the source, onto the destination with what my, our effect material, that should be it. That's, that's all you need to do to actually get this running. Uh, so we can plug that in and connect to our camera, drop our script over here, and assign a material. And so this is the default uh, pixel image effect. When you create an image effect, it's actually just going to invert your color. 
So there's nothing, there's nothing crazy that this does. It's literally just a normal vertex and fragment shader. So you can do a normal shader things in here. There's no fancy syntax or fancy anything. This is exactly the same as any of the vertex shaders or fragment shaders we've written. Uh, you won't find a surface shader. Surface shaders are designed by Unity to make lighting easier. And this doesn't need lighting, so there's no there's no point. Um, so a fragment shader is just as simple as you need, and it all of the logic here is literally this one line, and all it's doing is saying start at one and subtract our color from it, which is inverting the color. So let's actually get to pixelating this. Uh, what do we want? We want a number of pixels. Uh, how do I, I don't know how we want to count this. So the, the way we have to do this is there's going to be it's harder than I was originally thinking because our screen isn't a square. Uh, so we may need an X and a Y separate. Uh, just so we know have the dimensions like that. I don't know if there's a better way to do it. Uh, there probably is because there's always a better way to do it. Uh, but this is going to be our pixel width. Uh, so this is going to be the total pixels I get. Uh, let's just call it columns. Uh, so we'll have a pixel columns, and it'll just be a float. That also seems like a poor choice, but we're going to go with it. Why not? And we're going to do the same thing here with rows. Uh, so we just get the rows here, set it to 64 as well. This is going to look really weird. It's probably going to be, they're going to be stretched. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be some funky math you could do to fix that. But I, I haven't done uh, the research to figure out what that might be. So we have a columns and a rows. Uh, it should be relatively easy to get this actually in. So if I plug in our columns and our rows, we should be able to take that and we've got the UV coordinates which are going to be between 0 and 1. What we can do, I think, is... Yeah, so we're going to take our UV coordinates, so we're going to take a float 2 of our UVs, UV, I guess, and just set that equal to our input.uv. This is going to be a little bit different than that, though, because we want to multiply this uh, uv dot uh, u, I guess, times our columns and our uv dot v times our rows. Uh, so now instead of having this between zero and one, it's between zero and our columns and zero and I and our rows. Uh, so what that gives us is if we round this down, uh, so I think we can just do that, uv dot, ooh, that's not right, is equal to, I don't know if this works. <laughs> I'm kind of guessing in the dark on the functions here. I don't have IntelliSense and I don't, I don't have actually that much experience writing shaders. Uh, I do it a lot because I think they're really cool, uh, but uh, this is mostly just experience from poking in the dark and seeing what I can do. I'm usually coming up with really nauseating effects for whoever plays my games. Uh, so if we round this, I think we can do that, round it and divide it by the columns and the rows again. Ah, missing semicolons. That's why the formatting is getting all funky on us. So 
pulling in our rows and our columns. And so I did this all on separate lines. We could condense this down quite a bit. Uh, but all we're doing is we are multiplying by the dimension we want to work with, rounding that down so we're cutting out the fraction, and then we're dividing it back down so we're effectively eliminating that fraction. Uh, so this is creating 64 uh, numbers, 64 values in there, and then squashing back down between 0 and 1, and then look, doing a texture lookup on that. And we can remove this color inversion, that's not really needed. Uh, we can actually just remove that line entirely, and that one. Cool, don't need comments that say things it doesn't do. What is this, production code? Oh, I broke it. <laughs> uh, apparently X and Y. So I don't know the the swizzle operator for some of this stuff. Ooh, material is empty, material is empty. That doesn't seem right. It also doesn't seem like this is working. Because, so it's running right now. But obviously it's not running well. Uh, because I'm not seeing any change. <laughs> that wasn't what I expected. Oh, duh. <laughs> we weren't even using this value. We were just calculating it, and then the shader compiler was probably just throwing it out because we didn't ever use it. Now, we were still using the input from our vertex, uh, from our vertex shader. So all of those calculations were just worthless. There we go. This is more like what I was expecting. Uh, so we only have five columns right now, uh, which is a little bit weird because it's a float, uh, but you kind of get the idea. We've got a pixel shader and we can actually do this and it actually can scale in both directions. Uh, so if I scale this all the way up, you can't even tell anymore, at least vertically you can't tell that there's any pixels anymore if i scale it way down to like say 32 32 by 32 you kind of get this shape which is pretty convincing i don't know it looks it looks sort of pixely right uh so i i didn't really have much more to go over here, that like that's image effects. That's that's all you need to do to create an image effect. There's a lot more you can do with this. You can do like bloom, uh, uh, ambient occlusion, things like that. Those take more effort. This was just something that I was like, this will be a good. It's a good start, I think, uh, because it's not so complicated that you don't really know what you're where you're doing, and it also is a pretty. I think it's a pretty cool effect, actually. Because it, since it's an image effect, it it actually goes in real time. So you can actually kind of see this like translate. That actually looks really sweet. I like that. It looks surprisingly smooth for how pixelated this is. I'm surprised at how how smooth that animation is. But anyway, this is this is working. This is an image effect. Uh, so if there's anything else, any other image effects you guys want to look at. Uh, or just shaders in general, let me know in the comments. Uh, also, I would highly recommend if you really like image effects or shaders. Uh, I've been watching uh, Making Things Look Good in Unity, which I'll put a link uh, in the end screen somewhere, or probably in the description too. Uh, but his channel covers all sorts of stuff from uh, a lot of popular video games, No Man's Sky, uh, Overwatch, things like that. Uh, it does Pokemon as well. It just looks at how to take what they're doing and write a shader to accomplish that. Uh, and a lot of the code is open source, so you can take a look at it and do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Uh, so I actually use that as a reference for figuring this out because I couldn't find any actual uh, tutorials on how to do image effects. And Unity's has gotten very complicated. Uh, they've got like a multi, 
Unity's current post-processing thing combines all of these effects into a single pass. Uh, so instead of doing them one after the other, it just does it all at once, uh, which is more efficient, but also more complicated. Uh, so going through that was just more work. Uh, so highly recommend his stuff. It's really good. It's really well put together and it's pretty quick too. Uh, usually the videos are like 10 minutes, which you can get through in no time. Uh, it's shorter than my stuff. So yeah, this is this. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to see, I'd love to hear it because that's that's where all my ideas come from. Uh, so uh, also a few other things. Uh, I should have probably written these down because I've got a few uh, other tidbits to kind of cover. First off, Ludum Dare is next this weekend. Yes, this it starts Friday, so it'll be in like four days. Um, so I'm planning on doing that. So there probably won't be a video Friday. I'll probably be, I think I'm thinking I'm going to stream on beam, uh, and do that all weekend. I have no idea how well that's going to go because I'm, uh, yeah, there, there will be, uh, whatever we make is going to probably end up back here on YouTube, uh, over the next couple of weeks after that. Uh, but that's going to be a thing. I, I'd encourage you guys to check it out too. Uh, this will be my first time. I've usually done smaller game jams. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of like the Asylum Jam, uh, which is a thing that started on Game Jolt, uh, and there's a few others. But yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fun. So would encourage you guys to check it out. And it's just a weekend, so stop by and make something cool. Um, what else? Uh, also, our Data Cube process progress Pro yeah progress progress has been made with data cube uh i have found something so we can actually run serial ports in oops i'm smacking things i'm f we can re run serial ports in dotnet core which means we can actually put things onto our server onto a raspberry pi uh, which means we should be able to move forward with that. And actually, I'm hoping we can get it done this week uh, because it'd be really cool, I think, to have it running during the Ludum Dare. So uh, there may be just a flurry of videos about that later this week. Uh, also, uh, what was I talking about? Voxels. Voxel, the Voxel terrain. I have been meaning to get back to that. I've recorded like three videos or tried to. Uh, I've been trying to figure out compute shaders uh, and my normal style, I've been trying to do that while recording the video, uh, which with compute shaders that has not gone well. Um, I've never used them and it, it just, it, they're more complicated and they I it's just a lot of like back and forth. So uh, the idea is we are going to look back at that soon. I don't know when, uh, probably next week. Uh, there's a few things we need to do with that. We need to get a shader working. Uh, UVs need to be fixed. Uh, and there's just a few other things that uh, need to get sorted out. Uh, vertex colors is one of them. Um, but yeah, the, the, so that just needs to come together. Uh, and I've been meaning to get back to it. I know it's something that a lot of you guys really liked. Uh, so I'm not ignoring it. It It's just taking more time to get it to the point where I'm like, yeah, this is good. Or it actually works. Um, so that is coming. I haven't forgotten about it. It's just taking longer than expected. So I think I've done more updates than video content here. But <laughs> that's... That's it for today. So, uh, yeah, if there's anything else you guys think of, drop it in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. So, till then, see you, internet.